Hi, I'm Marvin Plackett, and today is Thursday, October 1st. Greetings to all residents, to all staff, and to all guests. Hoping you are doing well. Here at Episcopal Home, the last time I spoke to you, we had zero cases. We now actually have three. Uh, none of those are residents. All three are staff. One staff person is uh, from Kinder Village, and so because this person floats throughout all the classrooms in Kinder Village, uh, we worked with the health department to determine that we needed to close down Kinder Village for two weeks. So that's what is happening at this time. The other two staff members are at Episcopal Church Home, and of course they are quarantined at this time, and they are in recovery and will not return to work until they are fully healed and ha are symptom-free. Okay, so again, three staff at this time, and we wish them all the best, uh, that they all recover soon. Um, and no residents, certainly very pleased that we have no residents uh, with active COVID cases at this time. I want to reference a couple of articles from the front page of the Star Tribune over the last two days. Um, just jumping right in the middle of the article from yesterday. <clears throat> um, an increase in hospitalizations followed rising infections with the coronavirus in young adults and teenagers who then spread the virus to others at greater risk of severe illness, said Chris Ayersman, state infectious disease director. Quote, it takes a while for the impact to work its way out, she said. So you have the first generation of cases in the young age group, but as you see more cases in more groups, ultimately you are going to get to your more vulnerable populations. And that's the tricky part, of course, that um, some have commented that if the young get it, that there are uh, likely no consequences. That might be, but whom are they spreading it to? Um, who are they interacting with? And ultimately, it works its way to the vulnerable groups, and that, of course, would be the groups here at Episcopal Homes. And so we want to make sure that we do our part to stay safe, because we cannot stop everybody, in, or we cannot force everyone in society to do all the basics that we should be doing but we can do our part to minimize the risk to us. And of course, those basics are to be wearing a face mask at all times, to practice physical distancing, to frequent hand washing if you have any symptoms, stay home, uh, isolate and get tested. Uh, quoting from today's Star Tribune, 16 deaths reported as Minnesota virus cases rise. 16 COVID-19 deaths were reported Wednesday by the Minnesota Department of Health who urged people to seek flu shots to prevent seasonal influenza from exacerbating a worsening pandemic. Large social gatherings, Labor Day weekend festivities, and college and K-12 school classes and events have contributed to an acceleration in infections with the novel coronavirus, said Chris Ayersman. Um, so once again, these things are going to be happening, and I certainly have no uh, criticism at all of schools reopening. I mean, it's a conundrum. Uh, because, of course, the more society opens up, well, the more we have normal social interactions, and the more we do that, the more vulnerable we all become to the virus. So it is a real conundrum. It's a challenge uh, to find the right balance. Health department officials are trying to do that. The governor is trying to do that. And do, you know, it's, uh, so where is it? And, of course, it's invisible. The virus is invisible. So we all need to be practicing those core principles at all time to protect yourselves to protect one another to protect those you love so uh, vital that we all do our part let's see uh, what else did I want to comment on today I think overall that is it um, today let's see oh sorry I have an announcement though from uh, Kristen Kristen Aitchison someone you know well all right, um, the Swedish, excuse me, the American Swedish Institute's youth fiddling group called Lila Spielmanslag, don't you love that name? Lila Spielmanslag will be outside at IPC's front yard this Sunday, October 4th at 1 p.m. Please open your windows or throw on a jacket and come on outside to support their entertaining efforts. They'll be playing traditional Swedish folk music of waltzes and polkas. Oh, my goodness. My favorite. So be there. You do not want to miss that. Okay. Um, as you know, we sometimes have uh, residents 
participating in this uh, live stream on television and on Facebook as it's posted. It goes live every day at, uh, sorry, every day? Uh, no, I guess maybe just Monday and Thursday at 145, but then it's posted to our Facebook and you can watch it anytime. But in any case, it's my pleasure that every once in a while we have one of our residents joining me uh, because here at Episcopal Homes, we always want to make sure that we are fully living, fully embracing life. And uh, today, who the person we have is Pat Brintison from Iris Park Commons. Welcome, Pat. My name is Pat. I've lived in Iris Park Commons for four or five years, very happily. I'm going to read the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. This is from St. Francis of Assisi. 